years ago, as spectacular as ever, Cher toured the world and then said goodbye. Maybe she hadn't found what she was looking for, but after four decades in public life, she swore she and the elephant were calling it quits. Then, just this past weekend, Cher invited us to her home in Malibu. She had something to say. At 61, she was coming back. You're a failure at retirement. I seem to be. I seem to be. So you have a big announcement. <laughs> yes. I'm opening in Las Vegas. Yeah, Caesar Palace, uh, May the 6th. My baby shut me down. Cher says her new show will be even more over the top than her last tour. But how? So it's not going to be you in a black dress and a single spotlight? No. <laughs> it's never going to be that because that bores me. Because I have to have fun. Reported $60 million? I don't know. Oh, come on. You don't know how much money you're going to make? I know it's a lot, but I don't care. If it's a lot, if someone says, oh, it's a lot, okay, fine, it must be a lot. Do you worry about money? Oh, I always think I'm going to be a bag lady. When Sonny and I were really famous in the beginning, I remember going out and buying two electric frying pans. He said, what are you doing with that? I went, well, I'm just saving one in the box in case. She never needed the backup frying pan, but it was a precaution that came naturally enough to a girl who grew up poor and dyslexic. Cher's mother was young, a struggling actress who married eight times and moved Cher and her younger sister around the fringes of Hollywood. Romance came early to Cher as well. At 16, she met a 28-year-old record promoter, Sonny Bono. The rest became history with the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour. Sometimes when I'm down and all alone. The hits rolled out every decade. With Sonny, I got you, babe, in the 1960s. I got you, babe. Without Sonny in the 70s, with songs like Half Breed. Half Breed! That's all I have heard. If I could turn back time, hit big in 1989. Like and Believe was number one in 1998. Do you believe in love love? The tabloids have delighted in Cher's colorful love life. She married and even had a son with wild man Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers Band. But what about those rumors she once dated Elvis? Oh, when he called, I was just too frightened. I too, was too frightened to go to Las Vegas for, with him for the weekend. So you didn't do it? No. I regretted it forever. I regretted it with Marlon Brando, too. The list of not have dones are almost no. as long as the dones. Right. I mean, I think you only regret the things you didn't do. <laughs> While we're on the topic, yeah. your son said that you dated Tom Cruise in the 80s. Is that true? Yes. Was he a Scientologist in those days? No. No, he just was the most adorable man that you can possibly imagine. I don't understand the Scientology thing because I don't understand it. You know, Sonny was a Scientologist. I didn't understand that either. Anybody right now? No. Are you looking? Am I looking? Yeah, they fall in your lap. You don't go looking. They just, you just stub your toe over, guys. Are you looking for something different in that department now in love and romance? No, I'm always looking for the same thing. Just younger or older. You know, I'm looking for someone who can make me laugh, who I think is cute, that wants to go do stupid things still. Six years ago, Cher and I talked about the plastic surgery that she's had over the years. And while she admits she has had work done, she says it's not nearly as much as the tabloids claim. I wondered how she feels she looks now that she's in her 60s. So can you look at yourself naked in the mirror and do the assessment? Nah, I can look in the mirror and not see myself. I can make up my face, I can do all kinds of stuff, but I just really don't want to see everything. It's all, you know, it's all star filter. You know, in clothes, I think, you're a hottie, but, you know, I don't want to take my clothes off. Well, but some of the clothes you have on are well, sort of like, take your clothes off. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Who can tell so the that's, difference? That's as good as it gets, you know? That's as much as I want to see. You know, you said to me once that you've never felt pretty. Is that still the case? Well, if it was like that when I was younger, what do you think now? You know, I can create the illusion of it because a lot of it comes from what's inside of you, you know? So I can, I can do that pretty well.
All right, we talked about getting older last time I was here. Yeah, well, it hasn't gotten any better. It hasn't? I you... hate getting old. What can I tell you? I'm sorry. What don't you like about it? Don't you feel smarter? No, somebody keeps asking me that. Like, don't you feel smarter? As if that would uh, offset all the other crap. I was about as smart as I was going to get at 40. Oh, come on. Do you really feel that way? You don't feel more yourself, more independent, more... You're just searching. I'm hoping. Uh, you know what? You don't seem any smarter than the last time I saw you. <laughs> Never work with children, animals, or share. <laughs> Jokes aside, this vibrant, funny woman suffers from depression, something she's never discussed in public before. Chastity wrote in, in one of her books about suffering from depression. Do you identify with that at all? Have you been there? To yeah. that place? Yeah. I have. And yeah, I really have. And I thought, oh, I could make something out of my life if I never had depression. You know, it's, you get what you get. You get the cards that you're dealt with, and then you make a hand. People who have never suffered from it, I think, don't understand it's not the same thing as not being happy. No. No, not being happy is a day at the beach, you know. It's... It's something that you just can't explain. Work helps me a lot. I enjoy, I enjoy the work. It just keeps you moving. It keeps you around people. We end on politics. So do you have a candidate? For me, it's a no-brainer. It's Hillary. I know her, and I know what she's like when she's not in a whole bunch of people. And she is a strong woman. And you know what? The men have had it. They've had it all this time. And I don't think they're doing so hot. Much of Hollywood has, has lined up behind Barack Obama. You know what? I am sure he's a wonderful person. But I had dinner once with someone in the White House, the first time he was in the White House, first night of his presidency. And this man was a saint. And all he talked about was what he wanted to do for this country and the, his plans for the people and the hope that he had. And because of his inexperience, they cut him off at the knees. Who are you talking about? Jimmy Carter. Maybe you should run for office. No, I'd be terrible. Would you? Yeah, I'd be swearing and telling the truth. And besides, she's got another job come May in Vegas.